Let's take a look at uh, the, the next material. This is uh, systems linear equations in two variables, then systems linear equations in three variables, partial fraction decomposition, systems of nonlinear equations in two variables, inequalities and systems of inequalities, and linear programming. Okay. And um, we'll do this uh, showing some examples. First example I'm going to look at is out of 5.1. I got x plus 3y is equal to 5, and 3x minus 2y is equal to negative 18. And instructions are to solve this using substitution. Now, when we say solve this, we're trying to find the x and y values to cause these two equations to be true. What value can we put in for x and y that x plus 3y gives you 5, and 3x minus 2y gives you negative 18? Okay, so solving linear system of equations, two equations, two variables, using substitution. If you had three equations, three variables, you'd uh, do it slightly different. Step one, solve one of the equations for one of the variables. Step two, plug this into the other equation and solve. Another word for plug is substitute, so substitution method. Step three, plug the values, and I'll put an S on there, um, just to prepare us for the, the future. For now, um, when you're talking about linear system equations, you only have one value. But we're going to expand upon this when we get to the substitution for nonlinear. Plug the values from step two into the equation from step one and solve. Okay, so step one. Solve one of the equations for one of the variables. Doesn't matter which one you pick, whichever one looks easier to you. Now the one that will be easier is the one that does not have a number for the variable. So I'm going to work with the first equation because the x does not have a number in front of it. And that variable that does not have a number in front of it will always be the easiest one to solve for. So I'll take 3y to the right side. So we got x is equal to 5 minus 3y. Step two, plug this into the other equation and solve. Our other equation is 3x minus 2y is equal to negative 18. We just said that x is equal to 5 minus 3y, so we're going to replace the x here with 5 minus 3y. Everything else remained the same, but the x becomes 5 minus 3y. And notice I say plug this into the other equation and solve. So 3 times 5 is 15. 3 times negative 3y is negative 9y minus 2y equals negative 18. Negative 9y negative 2y is um, negative 11y equals negative 18. I'm we'll going to take 15 over to the right side becomes a negative 15. So then we've got negative 11y is equal to negative um, 33. Then divide both sides by negative 11. And we end up with y is equal to 3. Now step 3 says to plug the value from step 2 into the equation from step 1 and solve. The equation from step 1 will always be the easiest one to plug it into because it will always be solved for the other variable. So we're going to plug y is equal to 3 in here. So we'll get x is equal to 5 minus 3 times 3. 
x is equal to 5 minus 9, or x is equal to negative 4. And we write this as an ordered pair, a point. So we've got negative 4, 3 is our answer. Uh, that's, uh, that one's a substitution. So let me uh, clean that off. And we'll take a look at the next method, addition elimination. We've got 3x minus 7y is equal to 1. And 6x plus 5y is equal to negative 17. Now the addition method. is also called elimination. Different books called by different names. Now the reason why it's called the addition method is because you're adding, to, adding together the equations. 3x plus 6x is 9x. Negative 7y plus 5y is negative 2y. 1 minus 17 is negative 16. Now your goal is to eliminate one of the variables. So it's called the addition method because you're adding together like terms. And it's called the elimination method because your goal is to eliminate one of the variables. Well, if you look at this example here, nothing got eliminated. So we got to do some changes on this. Now, if you think about what would cause it to be eliminated, if this was a negative 7y and this was a positive 7y, then that would cause these um, to be eliminated. Or, if this was a 6x, and this uh, first equation had a negative 6x here, that would cause that to be eliminated. doesn't matter which one you focus on. I'm going to focus on uh, getting rid of the x's. And I think about what do I multiply this 3x by to get a negative 6x, and that'd be a negative 2. So then, negative 2 times 3x is negative 6x. Negative 2 times negative 7y uh, gives us positive 14y. Negative 2 times 1 is negative 2. And this just carries down. 6x plus 5y is equal to negative 17. Now let's try to add these and see what happens. Negative 6x plus 6x drops away. 14y plus 5y is 19y. Negative 2, negative 17 is negative 19. Notice that the x's are eliminated. That's your goal, is to eliminate one of your variables. So now, I can divide both sides by 19. And we get y is equal to negative 1. Now at that point, you want to take that and plug that back into one of your equations. Doesn't matter which one, whichever one looks easier to you. I'll pick the first one. So I got 3x minus 7y is equal to 1. We just said y is negative 1, so I'll plug negative 1 in for the y. Negative 7 times negative 1 is a positive 7, because 1. Take 7 to the right side, becomes a negative 7, which gives me negative 6, and then divide both sides by 3, and we get x is equal to negative 2. So the answer here would be negative 2, negative 1. Now that's as if we, and we're done with that problem. That's as if we eliminated the x's. Let's take a look at eliminating the y's, just to, just to see how the two compare. So I got 3x minus 7y is equal to 1, and 6x plus 5y is equal to negative 17. Now, first off, for them to be eliminated, they have to be different signs. So if I'm working on the y's, here's a negative, here's a positive. They're different signs, so that's fine. One easy way to figure out what to multiply the equation by is to multiply it by the number in front of the other y, or whatever variable you're working with. In this case, I'll multiply this by 5, by the coefficient. And on the, for our second equation, to figure out what to multiply the equation by, you multiply it by this number up here. So we're going to multiply this by 7. 
if they were both the same sign, both negative, both positive, you'd have to throw a negative in somewhere. Okay, 5 times 3 gives us 15x minus 5 times 7 is 35y and 5 times 1 is 5. 7 times 6x is 42x. 7 times 5 is 35y. 7 times negative 17 is um, 9, 4, negative 119. And now I'll add them together. That gives us uh, 57x. Thir negative 35y plus 35y cancels, eliminates. 5 minus 119 is negative 114. Um, so the y's are gone, they're eliminated. So now I'm going to divide both sides by 57. And we get x is equal to negative 2. We then plug that back into one of our equations, doesn't matter which one. I'll plug into the first one. So we said x is negative 2, so we got 3 times negative 2 minus 7y is equal to 1. 3 times negative 2 is negative 6, minus 7y is equal to 1. Take negative 6 to the right side, and we got 1 plus 6, so we got negative 7y is equal to 7. Divide both sides by negative 7. Then we get y is equal to negative 1. So our answer would be negative 2, negative 1. So you can see it doesn't matter which uh, variable you eliminate. Um, I'd say probably the one I chose first was probably the easiest path. Some of these will be even set up even easier for you, where they'll have the same number in front to begin with. Uh, but that's how you um, solve it via addition or elimination. I didn't put this into words, because every time I've tried to put it into words, it comes out um, a lot more complex than it needs to be. Let me clear that off. And we'll proceed to 5.2. How do you deal with three equations, three variables? Okay. So our third example, we have 4x minus y plus 2z is equal to 1. And we've got 3x plus 5y minus z is equal to negative 2. We have negative 9x minus 15y plus 3z. Um, equals zero. This is an oddball case. I picked the wrong one out of the book. Um, reason why is if you uh, how I know is if you multiply this equation by um, by negative three, it'll give you all this except for this side. Uh, this one comes up as no solution. Um, hmm. Okay, let me make up another one. Let's see. It may sound bad to start out with the answer, but uh, let's start out with the answer. Okay, so 4x uh, minus 5y plus 2z equals 4 minus 10 is negative 6 plus 6 is 0. 6, negative 4, 4. Okay, and then um, let's see, x minus 7y plus z equals, put a 1 in there, uh, negative 13, negative 10. Okay, and uh, 5x plus y plus z equals um, 7, 10. Okay, now let me double check these, because if I don't have this right, then um, it becomes a hideous problem. Not that it couldn't be worked, but um, negative 13, negative 10, 5, 7, okay, that should give me those. So this is what we're starting out with. Now I'm going to label these. This is equation 1, equation 2. And equation three, and I'm going to give you a step-by-step -step, uh, method for doing these. 
Um, sometimes you can use shortcuts on them if you know some of the variables are already missing. So solving a uh, linear system of equations. Three equations, three variables. And I'll write these steps down as I work the work the problem, just so we can see the build up. So step one, group um, the first two equations together. Group the last two equations together. When I say first two, I'm saying uh, E1 and E2. Group last two equations together. I'm saying E2 and E3. Okay, so step one. We're going to have 4x minus 5y plus 2z is equal to 0. And x minus 7y plus z is equal to negative 10. That's grouping E1 and E2 together. And we're going to have x, x minus 7y plus z is equal to negative 10. And we'll have 5x plus y plus z is equal to positive 10. So e1 so e1 and e2 are grouped together and e2 and e3 are grouped together. Step 2. Eliminate the z's from each group to come up with two new equations, E4 and E5. Well, if I look at this, if I eliminate the z's, here's 2z. If this is a negative 2z, then that will eliminate the z's. So I'm going to multiply the second equation by negative 2. So I got 4x minus 5y plus 2z is equal to 0. Negative 2 times x is negative 2x. Negative 2 times negative 7y is 14y. Negative 2 times z is negative 2z. And negative 2 times negative 10 is 20. Now I'm going to double check myself many times throughout this process because I oftentimes make a basic math error. And I don't want to do that this time. 4x minus 2x is 2x. Negative 5y plus 14y gives us um, 9y. 2z minus 2z cancels. And 0 plus 20 is 20. Now this is going to be my new e one of my new equations, e4. Now over here, I want to eliminate the z's. Now I notice this is a plus z and this is a plus z. If I multiply one of them by negative 1, doesn't matter which one, then I'm going to be able to eliminate the z's. First equation remains as is. x minus 7y plus z is equal to negative 10. Negative 1 times 5x is negative 5x. Negative 1 times y is negative 1y or negative y. Uh, negative 1 times z is negative z. And negative 1 times 10 is negative 10. Double check that. Okay, now I'm going to add them. X minus, 4, x minus 5x is negative 4x. Negative 7y, negative y is negative 8y. Z minus z cancels. Negative 10, negative 10 is negative 20. Now sometimes you'll notice that they're all divisible by the same number. And you can uh, go ahead and uh, divide everything. Like these are all divisible by 4. You could even say a negative 4. Um, but if I divide everything by 4, I get negative x minus 2y is equal to negative 5. Okay. Double check everything here. This will be e5. And uh, let me check that against the, what was my original values? 1 and 2, so 1, 
one and okay. Everything looks good so far. Now, step three. Group E4 and E5 together and eliminate the Ys. It actually doesn't matter which variable you eliminate. I'm just giving you a step-by-step -step that'll work. So we got 2x plus 9y is equal to 20. Got negative x minus 2y is equal to negative 5. You can see in this case getting rid of the x's would be a little bit easier. But I'm going to follow my steps. Remember to figure out what to multiply by. You always multiply by the other number. So I'll multiply this first equation by 2. And I'll multiply the second equation by 9. Now since they are already different signs, I don't have to worry about signs. So 2 times 2 is 4x plus 18y is equal to 40. Negative 9x uh, plus 18. Wait a minute. I messed up on a basic math error there. Minus 18y is equal to negative 45. Now if we um, add these, 4x minus 9x is negative 5x, uh, 18y minus 18y is eliminated, disappears, 40 minus 45 is negative 5. Now at this point, this is a new equation. This will be E6. And I guess I should have put that. Eliminate the y's, um, uh, which gives you a new equation, E6. Step 4. Solve the equation E6 for x. So we're going to have negative 5x is equal to negative 5. I'll divide both sides by negative 5. And we get x equal to 1. Now, Step 5, plug the value from step 4 into either E4 or E5 and solve for Y. Doesn't matter which one you plug it into, whichever one looks easier to you. Um, I'll uh, do E4 since there's no negatives there. So we got 2X plus 9Y is equal to 20. X is 1, so I got 2 times 1 plus 9y is equal to 20. 2 plus 9y is equal to 20. Take 2 over. Got 9y is equal to 20 minus 2. So we got 9y is equal to 18. And then divide both sides by 9. And we get y is equal to 2. Step 6. Plug the values from step 4 and step 5 into E1, E2, or E3 and solve for x. Wait a minute. Solve for z. <laughs> I knew something was wrong there. I've already solved for x. Okay, solve for z. If I come up here, um, I'm going to choose the first one. 5x plus y plus z. Equals 10. So we got 5x plus y plus z is equal to 10. We just said x is 1. So I got 5 times 1 plus y, which is 2, plus z is equal to 10. 5 times 1 is 5, plus 2 is 7, so I got 7 plus z is equal to 10. Take the 7 over, becomes a negative 7, and we get z is equal to 3. Our answer is written as an ordered triple, so put the x first, then the y, and then the z. And that would be our answer. Now, I won't um, go over the oddball cases here. Um, those are covered in the book. Um, but I just want to give you an example of the, the process. So let me clean that off. 
And we'll go on to 5.3, which is partial fractions. Now, all the different cases are given in the book, so I'm, I'm not going to do that. I'm just going to show you, in general, the process you need to go through when you're solving these. Here's an example I pulled out of the book. Got 17x squared minus 7x plus 18. Wait a minute. Uh, wrong one. six x minus seven over x squared plus x minus six. When you're working with these, these have to be factored as much as possible. So this becomes six x minus seven over x plus three times x minus two. Now you want to set this equal. And since these are linear and each factor is unique, they're not the same. This was x plus 3 and this was x plus 3. You'd have to handle it differently. You'll see in the book how to set that up. But we put a over x plus 3 plus b over x minus 2. This is going backwards of combining together on like, like or of um, getting a common denominator, combining like terms, merging it all into a um, single fraction and so forth. So again, if you have two unique linear factors down here, then you just put the letter A over the first one plus the letter B over the second one. Now, we're going to multiply everything by the LCM of all our denominators. So we're going to multiply everything by X plus 3 times X minus 2. So multiply it times this fraction. We're going to multiply it times this fraction. Then we'll multiply it times this fraction. This x plus 3 cancels that x plus 3. This x minus 2 cancels that x minus 2. This x plus 3 cancels that x plus 3. And this x minus 2 cancels that x minus 2. So we're left with 6x minus 7 equals a times x minus 2 plus b times x plus 3. Now a times x is ax. a times negative 2 is negative 2a. b times x is bx. And b times 3 is 3b. Now we want to group the x's together, so I've got ax plus bx, and then group the rest of it together. Negative 2a plus 3b. Now if I were to factor out an x, and I'll factor it out, but I'll put it after that, that becomes a plus b times x, then minus 2a plus 3b. Reason why I did it in that form, is we're going to equate, set equal, whatever's in front of the x's. You see there's a 6 in front of this x, there's an a plus b in front of this x. So we're going to have 6 is equal to a plus b. Then for the constant terms, we'll set this constant term, the negative 7, equal to this part over here that doesn't have an x on it. Because this is our constant portion over here. So we're going to have negative 7 is equal to negative 2a plus 3b. Let me grab a drink here. Now we want to solve this system of equations so we can then plug in the a and b up here. So our goal is we got a over x plus 3 plus b over x minus 2. We're trying to figure out what values of a, the a and b are going to equal. <clears throat> I'm going to do the addition elimination method because I like it the best. And I'll eliminate the a's. This is a negative 2a, so I want this to be a positive 2a. So I'll multiply the first equation by positive 2. 2 times 6 is 12. 2 times a is 2a. 2 times b is 2b.
And then I'm going to add these. 12 minus 7 is 5. 2a minus 2a cancels. 2a, 2b plus 3b is 5b. Then I divide both sides by 5. And you get b is equal to 1. Well, then we want to take that and plug that back into one of our equations to find out what a is equal to. And I'll pick my first one. So I got 6 is equal to a plus b. Um, b is 1. So then take the 1 over. And I get a is equal to 6 minus 1, or a is equal to 5. So this becomes, I now know what a is. This becomes 5 over x plus 3 and b which is 1 over x minus 2. And that would be your answer. Now it's easy to check these. After you come up with that, if you get a uh, single fraction, common denominator, um, so forth, then it should give you your, your original problem. And as I go through this and mentally check it, I see it does give me uh, my original problem when I merge these together. Now this may seem like, well, why would you want to do this? The um, idea of mathematics is get a single fraction, that's simplified form. This is a technique you'd see in a calculus course. Um, there's times that you want to split them apart like that so you can then do further, further mathematics with it. Specifically, you see this um, maybe sometimes in a Calc 1, oftentimes in a Calc 2 class. Okay, so that was our first example. Let's take a look at one with a quadratic factor. This is still out of 5.3. Okay, so we got 17x squared minus 7x plus 18 over 7x to the third plus 42x. Now again, you want to factor your denominator as much as you can. This doesn't work unless you factor it. And it looks like I can factor out a 7x. And that gives us x squared plus 6. Now the 7x is a linear factor. So I'll put a over 7x. But the x squared plus 6 is a quadratic. It has an x squared. Which means I'll put bx plus c over x squared plus 6. Okay, so that's going to be our form. We got uh, three letters we want to find. We want to find a, b, and c here. Well, same idea. I want to multiply everything by the LCM of all my denominators, which would be 7x, x squared plus 6. You don't have to think about this too much. It'll always be what's ever down here. So I'll multiply times this fraction on the left side. And I'll multiply it times this next fraction. And I'll multiply it times this fraction on the right side. So this 7x cancels that 7x. This x squared plus 6 cancels that x squared plus 6. This 7x cancels that this 7x cancels that 7x, and this x squared plus 6 cancels that x squared plus 6. So we're left with 17x squared minus 7x plus 18 equals a times x squared plus 6 plus um, hmm, 7x times bx plus c. So we've got 17x squared minus 7x plus 18. a times x squared is ax squared. a times 6 is 6a. 7x times bx is 7bx squared. 7x times c is 7cx. So I've got 17x squared minus 7x plus 18 equals ax squared, I'm going to rearrange them so the like terms are together, plus 7bx squared plus 7cx plus 6a. Okay, so I'm going to have 
17x squared minus 7x plus 18 equals, and I'll factor an x squared out, but I'll put it after. So this will be a plus 7b, and I'll put an x squared here, plus 7cx plus 6a. So we're going to set equal the numbers that's in front of our x squared. So we've got 17 is equal to a plus 7b. Remember, a and b just represent some kind of number. Then we'll set what's in front of our x's. So we'll set the negative 7 equal to 7c. And then we're going to set our constant terms at the end. So we have 18 is equal to 6a. Now we want to solve this so we then can figure out what a should be what B and C should be. And plug it into um, this right here. Well, some of these are pretty easy to find. I don't have to use my um, uh, three equations, three variables we saw earlier, because this one already is, has A by itself. So we've got 18 is equal to 6A. Divide both sides by 6. We get A is equal to 3. This one, we got negative 7 is equal to 7c, divide both sides by 7, and we get c is equal to negative 1. Now our last equation, a little bit harder, but we know what a is. We said a is 3, so I can put 3 in for the a. Take the 3 over, we got 17 minus 3 is equal to 7b, and it gives us 14 is equal to 7b, and divide both sides by 7. And we got b is equal to 2. So this becomes a, which is 3, over 7x, plus bx, uh, that'd be 2x, c was negative 1, so 2x minus 1, over x squared plus 6. And that would be our answer. Let me um, clean that off. And then we'll take a look at inequalities in two variables and systems of inequalities in two variables, 5.4. Grab a drink while it's cleaning it off. Oh, wait a minute. 5.4 is uh, nonlinear systems equations. We got y is equal to x squared minus 2, and 2x minus y is equal to 2. Still a system of equations, trying to find out what values of x's and y's cause that to be true. But now, um, this is on nonlinear. So solving a nonlinear system of equations using substitution. Step one, solve the equation with the smallest powers for the variable with the smallest power. Step two, plug this into the other equation and solve. And step three, plug the values from step two into the equation from step one and solve. Now you'll notice that these uh, steps are very similar to the substitution we already looked at. Just step one is slightly different. Okay, step one, solve the equation with the smallest powers. Well, our equation with the smallest powers are our second one. The other one has a squared on it. So we've got 2x minus y is equal to 2. And I say solve it for the variable with the smallest power. Well, these are both the first power. So you solve it for whichever one looks easier to you. Now, how you can tell which one's easier is it's always one without a number in front of it. So we're going to solve for y. So I'll take negative y, move it to the right side, and take the 2, move it to the left side. So we've got 2x minus 2 is equal to y. 
And then step two says, plug this into the other equation and solve. Our other equation is y is equal to x squared minus 2. Now right here we said y is equal to 2x minus 2, so we're going to place the y here with 2x minus 2. And then solve. Well, this is a uh, quadratic, so I want to get everything over one side, zero on the other. So I'll take the 2x minus 2, move those to the right side. So I get x squared minus 2x minus 2 plus 2. Negative 2 plus 2 cancels, so I got x squared minus 2x. And I can use the zero factor property to solve this. So I can factor an x out, and that gives me x minus 2. Zero, actually I think the book refers to it as zero product property. But same idea. You get zero on this side, you factor the other side, you set each factor equal to zero. So I'll set x equal to 0, and I'll set x minus 2 equal to 0. So that gives us 0, and that gives us 2. Now step 3 says plug the values from step 2 into the equation from step 1 and solve. Always this equation from step 1 will always be solved for the other variable, and it will always be the one of the smallest powers. So you have to plug it into this one. Um, linear systems equations is optional where you want to plug it into, but here you have no choice. Sometimes if you plug it into the wrong equation, you'll get false answers. So we're going to plug in x equals 0 and x equals 2 into that equation. So we said x is 0, so we got y is equal to 2 times 0 minus 2, and we get y is equal to negative 2. So this answer would be 0, negative 2. Now here I'll plug the 2 in. So I go y is equal to 2x minus 2. So y is equal to 2 times 2 minus 2. 2 times 2 is 4. 4 minus 2 is 2. So this is going to give us 2, 2. That would be our second, second answer. So in this one we've got two answers. There's no rhyme or reason on how many answers you're going to have when you talk about nonlinear. Sometimes it might be one, sometimes it might be two, might be three, might be four. You just work it and you see what happens. Now that was substitution. Let's take a look at elimination or addition. I'm not going to put this into, ste into steps. I never do, do well. Occasionally I slip up and do. I get this idea that somehow I can put that into words. And it can be put into words, but it makes a fairly simple concept uh, difficult. Okay. If you remember uh, what we tried to do before, we tried to eliminate one of the variables by making sure that they have, um, if one's a positive 2, for example, the other one's a negative 2. That's called additive inverses. Um, here, I'm going to eliminate the x's. That'd probably be the easiest. So I'll multiply my second equation by negative 2. So I got 2x squared plus 3y squared is equal to 11. Negative 2 times x squared is negative 2x squared. Negative 2 times 4 is negative 8y squared. Negative 2 times 8 is negative 16. And let me add these. 2x squared minus 2x squared drops away. It's eliminated. 3y squared minus 8y squared is negative 5y squared. 11 minus 16 is negative 5. And we achieved our goal. Our goal was to eliminate one of the variables. So now I'm going to divide both sides by negative 5. And we get y squared is equal to 1. Now the square root property says we'll drop our squared and we'll put a plus or minus square root around the other side which gives us y is equal plus or minus 1. Now we want to plug those uh, into one of these equations and solve for x. does not matter which one you solve for whichever one looks easier to you. second one looks easier because there's no number in front of the x squared. So I got x squared plus 4y squared is equal to 8. Uh, so we're going to plug negative 1 in for the y. Negative 1 squared is positive 1 times 4 is 4. 
equals 8. Take the 4 over, we get a negative 4. And that gives us x squared equals 4. And square root property again says you drop your square and you put a plus or minus square root around the other side. Which gives us plus or minus 2. So for that particular y value, we're going to have negative 1, negative 2. And we'll have negative 1, positive 2. Now we want to do the same thing with the y equals 1. So I got x squared plus 4y squared equals 8. We'll plug 1 in for the y. So I got 4 times 1 squared equals 8. Um, 1 squared is 1 times 4 is 4. Now you notice something. This is looking like the other equation, isn't it? If you spot that, then that will save you a little bit of work. It won't always happen, but a lot of times when both, both of these are squared, you'll see that pop up. Which means this y value gives us 1 negative 2 and 1 positive 2. Now, if you don't see what I just did, um, just go through and do it like we did the first one. You'll come up with the same answers. And those are our four answers. Okay, let's take a look at um, uh, the next section, 5.5. .5. Linear inequalities and, um, or not linear, inequalities in two variables and systems of inequalities in two variables. We're going to use a calculator for this. We've got y is greater than x squared minus 2. The book describes how to do it by hand if you're curious about that. So y is greater than x squared minus 2. Assuming my calculator comes up. There it goes. I'm going to go to y equals, press clear, and I'm going to put in x squared minus 2. So I'm ignoring the inequality for now. I'm just putting in as if it was y equals x squared minus 2. Now notice where my cursor is. It's right here. I want to put my cursor on this first slash here. So I'm going to do my left arrow key until it's on that first slash. You can't do it too much. Now it's a greater than. If we have a greater than or greater than or equal to, we want an upper right hand triangle. If we have a less than or less than or equal to, we want a lower left hand triangle. If you have a less than or greater than, you'll have a dotted line. If you have a less than or equal to or greater than or equal to, you'll have a solid line. This problem is a greater than, so we want upper right hand triangle. So when your cursor is on that first slash, you press enter, becomes a thick slash, and you press one more time, becomes an upper right hand triangle. If you got one of the newer TID4s, you have to press enter and it pops up a little box and you have to use your, I think your arrow keys and the enter to get the appropriate settings. There's a color setting there too, but you'll, you should be able to figure it out. Now once you get that, then you do a graph. And this is almost our answer. The only thing it doesn't give us, this is a greater than, and greater than which says a dotted line. So a line that's separating the shaded from the non-shaded is dotted. So this will be dotted. And then this is shaded in here. And this represents an infinite number of answers. Now that's um, just our regular one. Now let's take a look at a system of in inequalities. We got y is greater than x squared minus 4. And y is less than or equal to 3x plus 1. Now you have to be able to get y by itself on the left side on these. Now here's a greater than, which means I want an upper right hand triangle. We're going to put this on y1. This one's a less than or equal to, which means I want a lower left hand triangle. We're going to put this on y2. I made these up, so hopefully I didn't make up an oddball case. Now notice when I press clear, it did not clear off the shading over here. For me to get it back to where it was, I put my cursor on that, and I keep pressing enter. There's not a whole lot of choices until it becomes a regular slash again. 
Most TA3, TA4s, when you press clear, it'll clear that out and put it back to where it was. Okay, this is x squared minus 4. And we said it's an upper right hand triangle. So come over here, press enter twice, that's an upper right hand triangle. The next one down, the Y2, is going to be a lower left hand triangle. So I press enter three times. And this is 3x plus 1. Now if I press graph, there's our first one, and there's our second one. Our answer is where they're both shaded. So right here, this little piece here, not little, but um, that piece right there is our answer. Now you have to keep in mind what's what on this. Um, for example, this is a dotted line, this is a solid. So the, the straight line, or the x squared is the parabola, um, it's the dotted. So this piece right here, see my cursor going down, is going to be dotted. The line is a solid, so this piece will be solid. So, let's see if I can uh, halfway graph this. That's solid. And this piece will be dotted. And then uh, where the bull shade is your answer. And a book that will describe where is this used at. Mostly it's a business application. When you're doing optimization, trying to find uh, maximum productivity, maximum profit, and so forth. Okay, let me go ahead and clear this off. And let's take a look at the last section, 5.6. This is linear programming. And I got, um, what do I got? I got, um, x is greater than or equal to zero. I got y is greater than or equal to zero. And I got x plus y is less than or equal to 60. If I solve this for y, I take the x over, I get y is less than or equal to 60 minus x. Sometimes that helps us, sometimes it doesn't do anything. Um, more colors. I need blue. Okay, and this one will be y is less than or equal to 2x. Our goal is to maximize z is equal to 250x plus 150y. Okay. Now, um, x is left greater than or equal to zero. Here's x is greater than or equal to zero. And it's to the right. y is greater than or equal to zero. Looks like that, and I'm shading up. Now, where they're both shaded is quadrant one here. So when they tell you x is greater than equal zero, y is greater than equal zero, they're telling you quadrant one. Now, this one tells us y is less than or equal to 60 minus x. Um, if I were to graph this in the calculator, or even think this through, um, if I did over here on the side, that'd be like y is equal to negative x plus 60. That would tell me that my my um, y-intercept is 60. So if I come up here, let's say that's uh, 10, 20, 30, 40, 50, and 60. And I'll assume I make this equally. That's 10, 20, 30, 40, 50, 
in 60. Then if I were to graph that uh, purple, um, it goes from here passes through here like this. Now y is less than or equal to, if I were looking to shade in the calculator, shaded uh, down. So, so far this triangle right here is where everything falls. Now our blue, y is greater than or equal to 2x. The y-intercept is right there and then um, if I choose, if I plug in a value like 10, 2 times 10 is 20, so the next point would be right here. And uh, this would look like this right here. Okay, question is, is um, where is everything true at? You got four possible regions. You got one region here, you got your second region here, third region here, fourth region here. You might be able to use your graphing calculator to help you figure out where's everything true. Or you could also plug in points. For example, here's a point right here. This point is 2010. Okay, if I put uh, x is 20. 20 is greater than or equal to 0, that's true. If I put y in here, 10 is greater than or equal to 0, that's true. 20 and 10, if I put 20 here and 10 here, 20 plus 10 is 30, 30 is less than or equal to 60, that's true. If I put it in here, put 20 in for the, this, I got 2 times 2 is 20 and 10, 10 is less than or equal to 40, that's true. Which would imply that this is where everything's true. I wasn't expecting that, I was thinking it was going to be over here. Obviously I cannot eyeball these. If I pick this point, 10, 30. Well, 10 is greater than 0. Plug in the x here. Plug in the y. 30. Put it here. 30 is greater than or equal to 0. That's true. 10 plus 30 is less than or equal to 60. That's true. But if I put this in over here, put 10 in for the x, 30 in for the y, 2 times 10 is 20. 30 is not less than or equal to 20. Well, anyway, we determined colors. Not that you can see that real well. Well, we determined that this shaded region right here is where there, all four of these inequalities are true. Now we got um, three points to consider. Your linear program revolves around your extremes. When I say extremes, I'm talking about the endpoints of whatever figures created here. In this case, a triangle. So we want to know what this point is. I'll label this as P1. And we want to know what the, this point is. I'll label that as P2. And we want to know what this point is. I'll label that as P3. Okay, so P1. P1 is the intersection of blue and purple. Different colors actually do help here. I'm not being like artsy or anything like that. It's, just, it's easier to see. Blue was um, this right here. And I'm going to treat it as if it's an equals. So y is equal to 2x. Now purple. Purple was this right here, which is y is equal to 60 minus x. Now this is a system of equations. We want to solve this. Substitution is the easiest way here. Because here we said y is equal to 2x. We can put 2x in the y down here. So we've got 2x is equal to 60 minus x. Uh, take that negative x over. We got 2x plus x is equal to 60. 3x is equal to 60, or x is equal to 20. Yeah, that kind of makes sense looking at it. It looks like 20, 40, doesn't it? Then I'll plug that x equals 20 back in, find out what the y is. So I got y is equal to 2 times 20. I plug in this first one because it looks the easiest. And I get y is equal to 40. So this first point here is going to be, um, it's going to be 2040. That's our first point we're working with. My second point, P2. P2 
is the intersection of uh, blue and red. Well, red is x equals 0. Remember, we uh, change the inequality to an equals. Um, and um, actually, it's an intersection of blue and green also, isn't it? doesn't matter which one you pick. What's blue? Blue is y is equal to 2x. Well, x is 0. We know that. So if we plug that into the other one, we got y is equal to 2 times 0, or y is equal to 0. So that point would be 0, 0. Makes sense. It looks like the origin, doesn't it? And then P3. P3 is the intersection of green and purple. Green. Green was y is equal to 0. Purple is y is equal to 60 minus x. Well, y is 0, so I'll put 0 in for the y. Take negative x over, and we get x is equal to 60. So this point would be 60, 0. So those are our three points that are the extreme values. Now our goal is to maximize z is equal to 250x plus 150y. Okay, so what we're going to do now is we're going to take each one of those points and plug it into this equation. So I got 20, 40. Z is equal to 250 times 20 plus 150 times 40. Uh, plug that in for X, plug that in for Y. I'm just double checking myself. Do the same thing for 0, 0. So I got z is equal to 250 times 0 plus 150 times 0. And then do the same thing for 60, 0. So we got z is equal to 250 times x, which was 60, plus 150 times y, which is 0. Um, what's that give us? 0, 5,000 plus... Zero zero two eight four times three hundred six six thousand. Okay, which gives us eleven thousand. Now, um, over here, two hundred fifty times zero zero, one hundred fifty times zero zero. So z is equal to zero. Zero 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 three fifteen thousand plus one hundred fifty times zero zero. So we got z is equal to. You know, I don't really trust myself on that. Let's try this again. Two hundred fifty times twenty plus one hundred and fifty times 40, 11,000. Okay, I feel, and I feel pretty good about zeros, but let's do this one. 250 times 60, 15,000. Okay, our goal is to maximize. So you look for your largest value. So this is our maximum value, and it occurs at the point 60, 0. So these, uh, this would be our answer. Now, the problem was different. It said minimize. Then you minimize, your answer would be this one right here, because z is equal to 0. But that's, uh, that's linear programming. Probably the hardest part is doing the original picture and seeing where your intersections are at. And again, I would recommend doing these in different colors, uh, because it really does make it simpler on the, the setup and thinking the process through. And that's the end of the, end of the materials.